Alright mate, I'm gonna let you go. Ready? Don't punch it. Don't punch it anymore. Alright, he's off. And he's alright. But I better get into shore and just uh, inspect this... Uh, <laughs> inspect this hole. I can hear it slowly leaking. Oh well, we knew it was on the cards. I didn't think it would happen so quickly. Let's get in quick. It's only going very slowly, so we'll have time to patch it up. Where is it? You know what's annoying? It's actually in. It's right up underneath. Oh, it's right in there. What a pain of a spot. All right, let's get it up here and get safe first. Because I can't just tape over that. I'm going to have to cut that D-ring out. And give myself some room to do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll get this uh, motor up and we'll be able to push it up. She's a bit windy. <laughs> ah, never a dull moment. Okay, we pumped it up to pressure. Can hear it coming out pretty quick now. <laughs> Just there. God. Yeah. I'm just there. I'm gonna have to cut into it somehow. This is not ideal. It's not what I wanted to be doing in my boat. But, things can be repaired. Be careful not to put any bigger holes in it. Okay. It's right there. Okay, put the gear ring out. Need like a tire plug. <laughs> That would be perfect. It's something you could just poke in and then pull back and glue like a puncture repair kit for a, uh, a bike. What do we got here? What do we got? We've got to have something here that's more useful. Well, she's not pretty, but what I did is I just cut a little bit of the... Um, the excess that was there and um, I put lots of glue on it and then I got uh, the other shear pin that I had and then just poked it in so hopefully a bit of that glue sort of gets on the inside as well and then got it I got it and then put lots of glue on it and then I've got it all gummy and pushed it down and now I've just taped it over it just to protect it a little bit so yeah that'll get me home uh, back to the camp and then I think maybe uh, look I'm not sinking so it's only a tiny tiny pinhole I'll have to uh, practice my uh, marlin wrangling skills. He was very green, maybe I should have let him uh, stay out a little longer. But, pretty cool to get one, straight off the bat. I've only been fishing for, oh, I don't know, that's Rooney's there, so I'm not too far away from it, but I don't know, one troll up, I didn't really cut any laps or anything. Look, we've still got plenty of air. As long as that gets nice and gummy, that glue gets really gummy real quick. Because I used it to glue that uh, rail base support on it, it seems to be very strong. So I guess when we get back to camp, I'll pull it off. I'll try and get it really claggy, and I'll try and get a proper patch on it. But for now, I guess that'll do. And if I need to inflate it a bit more, I can just keep topping it up on the water. So it's why you bring the pump and the repair kit with you. And uh, yeah, marlin fishing on an inflatable boat, eh? Who would have thought? <laughs> We'll get home real fast and we'll see what we're dealing with.
Well, we made it back to camp. It's definitely going down, but it's not going down fast, so I'm pretty uh, happy about that. Don't want to start sinking any faster. And there's our tent, so tides come up quite a bit. Look how nice this water is. Look at that. Crystal clear. Well, we had a bit of fun. <laughs> Let's get up to uh, the tent and we might drag this thing up and figure out what we're going to do, see if we can plug it a bit better. All right, rinse that off, let it dry, and then we'll really clag it up with some glue. <laughs> but all in all, it's actually seems to be pretty good. <laughs> The things you do, eh? Okay. That should keep those from fraying anymore because they were starting to rip all up into there. Now, it's pretty dry. Could just leave it just a little longer and then I'll just really clag as much glue up into that corner as I can and then just lay this whole thing up with glue and then just maybe push this down and glue that down as well. More glue, more better, I think. <laughs> Until tomorrow when we get an even bigger marlin and we get a bigger hole. Yes, we'll let some air out. Okay, we can't afford to be shy with this one. Just got to put as much on as we possibly can. So we'll just leave that for a minute and it'll get really sticky and gummy. Even though it's blowing bubbles, that's fine. Because once it's getting gummy, it's got pretty low pressure. A little bit more out. So it's very low pressure now. So once that gets a bit sticky over the next maybe five minutes, then I'll start pushing it together and holding it together and it should be enough to hold it from that point on. As soon as that gets a little more tacky, maybe give it about 10 or 15 and then I'll just give it one more push to sort of push that little hole closed. But that's a very tiny hole now. Anyway, I'm going to go jump in the water and then maybe just have a chill, maybe have something to eat. I thought they might do this. Clive here, a mate of mine who came up last year. I knew he was thinking about coming up. I reckon that's them there. Hey. All right, the fellas are getting all set up. So, yeah, it's nice to have some people here and uh, have someone to talk to now because um, I think that middle of the day is just so sweltering hot from, uh, and I got back what must have been about three or something and it was so hot I was like man I just got to escape the sun I think uh, tomorrow morning I'll wake up I've got to give that uh, blue time to cure so I won't be able to pump it up till tomorrow morning but I think it should be good to go hopefully we can wrangle them in a bit better tomorrow and um, not actually pierce the boat again Anyway, we go back, have some something to eat, and then enjoy the sunset. <laughs> it's going to be a cracker by the looks of things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, the boat's still there. Trying to check if that patch works. And then we'll head straight up to Rooney's, I think. Might pack um, some lunch stuff. But first, toilet break. <laughs> we'll just quickly pack a bag and then head off, I guess, once we check if this works. Should be alright though. Pretty confident. Tiny hole. And I've made it with lots of glue. <laughs> it's gotta be fine. <laughs> the confidence. <laughs> if not, we bring the pump with us. Well, that's that. Got marlin slime on it. Well, we'll see how long that holds. So we've got the pressure up to just under three. We need to do maybe two more pumps. Three more pumps. Four more pumps. Alright. We'll check that just before we leave and see if the pressure drops. But I think we're going to be good to go. Those guys are high and dry, man. Those jet skis are heavy as. 
I might have to go give him a hand. Do you want a hand? <laughs> yeah, I'll come down. <laughs> this one's your best bet. Uh -oh. Can you pull that one out with that one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, not yet. Hey. <laughs> now they just gotta pull clothes out. That's the beauty of the light craft. Doesn't matter what's going on. Can still most of the time get out. Alright, let's get moving. Wind's picked up already, it's very early on in the piece. But I've sussed out my, like yesterday, it was a bit of trial and error, but today I think I've got my uh, lures nailed. So they're popping along nicely, like I've slowed down now just to cut the wind noise, but I think that's gonna be key. Like they're just a little bass, like my uh, my prop wash, and uh, like maybe the fifth bow wash on this thing. But uh, they pop every couple of seconds, and it's like a nice big bubble trail, so that's gonna be, uh, I think I'm in the running. And I think I've slowed my speed down. I was actually going fast before and I was like, man, they're not popping as much as soon as I slowed down just a tad. Probably more around the 15K mark. Then they started popping even better. So I'll just stick about that. I've got it sus so it's just above the where the rabbit is on the outboard. <laughs> so we'll just uh, maintain that kind of speed and that good pop and uh, we'll just work our way up to Rooney's, zigzagging in between, say, the 20 metre and the 10 metre mark, and just work the ground. We'll focus on Marlin. If the other boys go wider and get a school of uh, fish that uh, are edible, that'd be great. But uh, I'll only go for that if I come across one, I think, because I'm just gonna concentrate on Marlin and in close, because otherwise I'll spend too much time going out wide, a couple of k's. But anyway, a little bit of rain out there at the moment as well. All right, we'll keep at it. We'll get these bad boys popping. <laughs> Woo! Get this lure in. Right in. Come on. Sun just had a go at this. What is this? Oh, what are they going to be this time? Guess we got to get cameras on again. Oh. Yeah, let's just kill the engine. Oh, what have we got? <laughs> Something. Oh, someone's... Oh, it's coming close to us. Some head shakes. Let's get it. Come on. If this is a marlin, I don't want it anywhere near the boat yet. Oh, God. It's awfully close all of a sudden. Come on, go for some runs. Don't come up near me. <laughs> it's way too close, it's just hanging down. What is it, what is it, what is it? It's a mackerel of some sort, I think. Oh, it's a spotty, perfect. Here we go. Well, that's exactly what we do want for lunch. Wow, he must have nailed that skirt. See if we can get him under control. How's he hooked? Come on, come on. Oh, he's right in the side of the face, eh? All right, now let's keep him away from the boat until we get him under control. Look at that mackerel. Now, I'm not gonna let him off this gaff 
until I've got him well under control. So it's still a work in progress, this uh, controlling the fish. But I did bring these, which will allow me to grip his head. Just uh, get the knife out and put him out of his misery as quickly as possible. A bit, uh, bit of blood on the deck on the old uh, inflatable first up. He's not had a, this is not, this is the first fish. We'll continue on, maybe slowly make our way in closer. Concentrate on some marlin. Ooh, look at that bust up. Oh, I'll slowly start heading out there. Hopefully I can get upwind and get pushed back on it. I might just kill the engine and see if it, this wind pushes me up there. Because they're so spooked and they're moving so quick. They look like long tails. Whoa, look at them. Come on wind. It's a pretty stiff wind. Push me, push me, come on. <laughs> this way I might be able to get real close. As long as they, if they stay where they are, or head up this direction, I'll be looking really good. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're coming back, they're coming back. Here we go. Look, they're right there. Come on, come on. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> come on, someone have a, sh have a shot at it, have a shot at it. <laughs> they're just there. The plan worked, sort of. Oh, yeah, got him. Yes! How good is surface fishing? Let's tighten up a little bit on him. <laughs> How good is that? Oh. All right. Okay, we got our lures in here. Add a little bit more pressure now. <laughs> it's pulling me straight back to the school. <laughs> yeah. Fishing is like it doesn't get much more fun than this when they're busting up and you lay your slug in there. <laughs> Look, they're everywhere over there too. Come on mate, let's get a look at ya. Oh look there's colour. Oh, look at that fish! Long tail, oh, Mac tuna! <laughs> I thought he was going to be a long tail. <laughs> you wish, Rod. <laughs> wow, he's a good one. <laughs> he's cool. Oh, don't know that way, not that way. Oh. <sighs> Jesus, a nice size Mac tuna, that's for sure. Alright, mate. Here are we going to deal with you? I say we just get you up. Slide you on in, maybe. Oh, wow, he's awesome. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, definitely blooding, blooding the arm. Uh, here we are. Go, go, go. Show. <laughs> he's ready to go. Just give me the kicks. Man, there's some action today. Lots of mac tuna, plus spotties here and there. Haven't seen any long tails, but guess we should go on the marlin hunt again. So I'll go all the way up to Rooney's and then just start cutting laps around this area. Surely there's marlin around if there's that much bait and uh, tuna action. So we'll put in some time with the big skirts and uh, we'll stop maybe casting. Oh, it's hard to resist, but we'll try and stop casting at the smaller schools or the, small, the smaller fish. Start focusing on what we came for. Well, made it to Rooney's point. Still really blowy. I'm going with the wind, so it doesn't seem that bad, but it's pretty nasty. Gonna be a long slog back. But we'll keep trolling for Marlin. It's nice to be up here, but it seems more productive way back there, maybe halfway. So I guess I'll just start making my way back. Nice to make it here, but yeah. You can see why it's fishy, it just drops off, that sandbank just drops off to like 20 meters. I'm already in 20 meters, you could probably cast this far out. But, there's no point in hanging around if there's no marlin. So, we'll get all the way back, we've got to get all the way back over to there. So it's going to take a while. Might get back, try and rest up out of this uh, wind for a bit and maybe have an afternoon session. We'll see what, it, what happens with the wind. Anyway, let's slowly, yeah, look, it's gonna be choppy as. But if I sit back here, 
it trims the boat up quite a bit and I don't get wet. This boat is awesome. Woo, it's shallow. <laughs> If I wash it back, is it really bad to do it on there? You can do it on here. Is that, a, is that better? Yeah. Alright, thank God for Clive's jet ski, huh? Up out of the sun, right, we're ready to go. And I've got some extra bits for the eagle. Hopefully, he comes back around. It'd be cool to feed him uh, up closer. Oh, he didn't do it. Come, buddy, have another swipe at it. He pulled out, he's scared of it. I think we're gonna attack him. Well, that was a pretty uneventful afternoon session. Just chilled out until uh, the uh, the heat had died down. But unfortunately, there was not really a lot going on. A couple of bust ups, but it's pretty average. But um, yeah, I had such a good morning that I'm not overly upset about it. Uh, and we've got all of tomorrow and Sunday morning as well. So plenty of time to catch more marlin. But right now, I think we'll have a ceviche. I might as well use the rest of that spotty. Really looking forward to this. I haven't had ceviche for ages. Got chilies, got coriander, got everything. Make sure this is good to go. We need an orange. Might as well use a mix of citrus. I wish I had a proper knife. It's always a pain to cut with a filling knife, but I'm too. Uh, too tight to bring more than one because <laughs> it's too tight weight wise. <laughs> Ooh, get back here. Get rid of that roast bit. Of that juice out. Mm, another seed. Okay, let's move under the. Oh, I'm losing it. Limes. And some people don't use oranges, but I prefer oranges because it's um adds some sweetness. And sometimes I put sugar in as well. I still might because I've got some sugar here. Try and get as much of that lime juice out as possible. It's much easier when you've got a squeezer or something, isn't it? <laughs> There's a little sand crab that keeps popping out there. Hello, mate. Why don't you come out in a sec again? Oh, what fish have we got? Let's have a look. How big are we going to do it? Maybe pieces about that big. I won't cube it. I like sort of, I like them in sort of thin strips, like about that big, rather than cubes. Some people like cubes, but I don't. <laughs> so we're gonna do it the way I like it. Almost there. That's heaps of fish. All right, looks good. Now we just get it into this mix here. You know what I should do? I should actually add a little bit of sugar first. So it gets down into this juice. 
just to give it a bit more sweetness. Now we give it a mix. And we'll check how much, if we need that extra orange or not. We might not need it actually. Where's my spoon? That will make things easier. <laughs> it's pretty I'm not facing the other way. It's a pretty nice backdrop. <laughs> it's beautiful. But it's too hard to get in there. Let's get the rest of that coriander in as well. That'll be enough. Oh. Is there enough juice? Oh yeah, there's still plenty of juice down there. Give it another stir. As long as that citrus comes in contact with all of that, we'll be looking good. All right, in the meantime, we'll chuck this. <laughs> nice. Chips. Let's check on this. Sweet. Look, it's starting to get a bit of uh, the white. Starting to cook the flesh with the citrus. It should taste that. Yep, yeah, that's plenty sweet, that's for sure. Ooh, and it's got a bit of chili, yes. It's enough bite in that to make it yum. Oh man, this is going to be so good. We'll just let that sit just for a little longer. Just a little bit more uh, time in the lemon juice and the lime juice and everything and all the citrus. And then we'll be good to eat. But how is this place? It was a little uh, windy. Deceiving because once you get past once it starts to get ripply out there. It's actually surprisingly windy <laughs> but Still pretty amazing Super white sand super blue gin clear water And Marlin If we're lucky <laughs> All right, I've waited long enough. Let's get it. Let's get it out That looks really good Get a little quick taste just before we take it over to the troops. One last mix. So it's all turned white. Hasn't cooked right through, but that's fine by me. Normally you'd probably could leave it a little longer, but it doesn't bother me at all. It's quite cooked through. And we get our chip. We get some on. And we get a bit of that sauce. And the perfect sunset too. Man, that chili is good. So just so simple. Coriander, chili, lemon, lime, and orange, a little bit of sugar, mixed together. Bang. That's good camp food. Oh, 